Right, this morning it's Friday, it's half past seven. It's another glorious day. And I last went on a hike. Today. So this feels quite adventurous, but I've decided to go again. And the reason is that I think the weather's going to break. And I'm not sure what's happening next week. It's not looking, certainly not looking good for the first part of the week. So I've decided to come and do the next stretch of, um, of my hike. Um, I think I've got everything. We're going on a slightly different journey, so I'll be able to give you some road stuff. This journey is going to probably look quite different. We've got a lot of reservoirs to do. And I'm almost at northerly point. I think the hike after this one will be as north as I'm likely to go for now. I have a couple of more southern based hikes to do if the weather holds. But of course at some point this weather's going to change and it's going to be a permanent change because summer doesn't last. So I'm getting in while I can um, all the hikes that I can because at some point it's going to stop and I'm not up for hiking in sideways wind etc. A crisp morning that's clear would be lovely but they're going to be few and far between up there I should imagine out there on the moors so I'm just setting myself up a little podcast to listen to um, from the next big idea it's called laziness does not exist this is a good one um, and I'm just going to pop in my maps I think it's only going to take about 40 minutes to get there parking should be good I've picked a good time it looks quite quiet 37 minutes it reckons um, right, so let's get this show on the road and I'll see you at the other end. size car park and actually already quite full. There's a lot of space here though, I think you'd be alright parking here. Right, so it's quarter past eight. I have arrived and now I'm going to get myself organised and uh, we can head off. So here's my parking space. Ignore the bin, and up behind those cars is the first reservoir, and there's the White House restaurant, which is next to the car park. 
just waiting for some walkers to go. All locked up. Um, let's get going. pub and a restaurant very much open tell you what if you had a long day's hike and you had the money this would be a lovely place to end your day we won't be doing that though because we don't have the budget <laughs> so somewhere up there over the hill there is where I ended my last um, my last hike. Here's some information about Blackstone Edge Reservoir. Wow. So this power but dates from 1671. those hikes I've done and this is the highest I've got. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be doing all of that. Right. So we need to follow this for a little bit and you can see up there there's a wall. That's the wall of the reservoir. Although we can't walk right along the top, but you see all that lady is running. It's crazy running people. That's where we're going to walk. I said it was going to be sunny today, yesterday, and then this morning the weather reports suggest it's going to be overcast which I'm actually pretty happy about as long as it's not freezing cold and I can see what I'm doing I don't mind I guess that feeds the canals Here we are, the entrance. <laughs> so information about the moors. We are less than half a mile away from the biggest moorland conservation programme in the whole of Europe. So, we are there. Now we were in Rishworth on Monday, or on the borders of Rishworth. We saw Green Withens Reservoir there, and there's Blackstone Edge. That's where we ended. 
that's where we ended on Monday. That's where I am now, so that's all I missed. There's Mossmore. Here's the Pennine Way here. We followed it all the way down there and up there to there. And now we are here. And we're going to follow all the way up past see Blackstone Edge here, White Home Reservoir there, the Light Hazard Reservoir there, and Warland. And we're going to end up just up here, I think. And then on our next one, we will meet up there via a different route. So, there you can see some of our route. That's really handy to have. So, more curlews hopefully. I haven't seen many of them in the last couple of walks. And the other one is the Twite or Pennine Finch. I've never seen a Twite. They are quite rare now. Let's take some photographs of this because this is quite interesting. Which feels quite damp in the air today. Um, should be all right. See how we go. Stunning view. There's the pub. This should be quite an easy route to follow. Looks very straightforward all the way. And there are lots of good landmarks because it's reservoirs almost all the way. But this might be quite a long hike. This could easily be an eight miler. <clears throat> so we'll see how we get on. Check the weather just to be sure. Yeah, we should be fine. I don't think we're going to have any sun today, which is at least good for cameras. Um, should be between about 19 and 21 degrees today, so that should be good for my energy levels at least. It was incredibly hot at home yesterday, I was exhausted. Didn't really get anything done. It was just too hot. <clears throat> it was nice to enjoy some cooler air today. on the bend here we will get a look at the reservoir. Over in the distance there is another wind farm. Look at this view. Can you imagine living out here? It would be absolutely amazing. I was reading a couple of days ago that they had some 
fire outbreaks here on the moors literally the day after my Monday hike and it was only half an hour away from where I was. Unfortunately it's that time of the year where the fires do happen and sadly some of them are deliberate. Lovely stretches of conservation land here. Look how hilly it is up there. Even just off the road here, it's so quiet. Right, let's have a look at this reservoir. Ah, oh, look at that. Wow. Let's give you an expanse of that. That's a lot of reservoir. Lovely splashes of colour. Right. still shot of that at the end. What if that was a twite? There's a little bird down there, just flew past me. Of course the binoculars are right at the bottom of the uh, right at the bottom of my backpack. Of course they are. I 
worked out a little list last night of the names of all the reservoirs. <laughs> there are a few of them today. A bit hazy today. There's still some low clouds, so the views might not be as clear cut as last time. <clears throat> Another reservoir down there. I'll find out what that is and geese down there. Not quite as out in the middle of nowhere up here. But it's very serene. I'm just going to stop at these rocks because <laughs> there are bits in my boots and it's really irritating me. I don't 
where they've come from. Little grass seeds in my boots. It's very annoying how a tiny little grass seed can <laughs> irritate when you're walking. It's distracting. But they're out for now. We may have to make other adjustments as we go. towards me in the distance and there are two cyclists coming past me as I was adjusting my boots and they are about to disappear around the corner right in the distance I'll drop my camera in a minute for this walker oh someone with a dog Let's catch up with you in a minute. Somehow walking his dog. Get a lot of dog walkers. I think if you live close enough to make this your regular dog walking area, you are pretty lucky. It wasn't too bad for me this morning. It was only just under 40 minutes. But you'll have seen that part of that drive. I can see a runner in the distance. There's a few runners and fell runners around here. A bit bonkers. There are a lot of pylons out here, which you don't see on the National Trust land. So I'm guessing this probably isn't National Trust land because I don't think they would allow wind farms and pylons. Which is why you, when you're out in the Peak District, in that lower area of the Pennines, you don't see anything up there except the landscape, because it's just not allowed. But I'd rather have a few pylons than a road going through the middle of it. down there.
fit to run out here, although actually this is a nice flat section. This is probably really good for running. I used to run. I started running during lockdown, <laughs> as so many of us did, although I used to run a lot before that. I've been through my phases of gym addiction and fitness addiction as an escapism more than anything, which I just don't need anymore. Um, and then I'm one of those people that is all or nothing and I expect results. So I go crazy, get obsessed and then lose interest. But with the running, after about a year of running myself into the ground, thinking that was the solution to my weight issues. I lost some weight. Um, I got shin splints, which are tiny hairline fractures that you get on your shin bones from too much impact work. And to be honest with you, I do run a bit like a baby elephant. <laughs> and it's not horrifically painful, but you can feel the pain uh, up the front of your the front of your shins. And I had that for about a year and a half. And they do say it can up, take up to two years for them to properly heal. And I haven't run since because I'm not interested in it anymore. I mean, hiking is a great way to kind of meet in the middle and do exercise that's fun, but of course it's seasonal. So I need to work out how I'm going to stay active once the weather changes. I don't know whether if money changes, if income improves, I can get myself a gym membership through the winter just so that I can go and do stuff on particularly on days when it's just awful which is like most of the winter up here we have a pure gym and they don't have subscriptions you just renew every month and it used to be about 12 pounds but I don't know what it is now and so maybe that's an option if I could get up to, back up to doing my 10,000 steps a day on average maybe you know maybe that's the way forward I might look into that because that might be get me through the worst of it say November to February or something like that with a gym membership another dog walker so we'll Drop the phone again. I like how friendly people are up here. Everyone's got a good morning for you. Look at this fun little bridge. How cute is that? you can walk over it. That's so cute. I'm not going to walk over it. I'm sticking where I'm sticking. But look at that. How splendid. And there's obviously something that goes down there. Oh yes, you can see the markers all the way down there. I wonder where that goes. This fantastic rocky outcrop in front. I 
said in my last hike how I quite like pylons. So far I've seen two designs out here. There's this one you can see here and then that one is a different design there. It's just one line of pylons going across the moors because everybody wants their electricity. And then right on the top there is that blooming awful wind farm. I really hate those things. I moaned about those in my last hike. So I won't mention them again. Feeling warm now, although I don't feel like the temperature's gone up. But obviously, I'm an unfit person trying to trying to get fit. Look at that. I'll get a photo of that. I think that's the rainstone. I'll have to double check that when I get back. I don't want to waste my phone batteries. And I'll put some information up here. So you can read about it. Oh yes, I can't read it, but there's text on there. They've inscribed. They've inscribed something into the uh, into the rock. I saw that on that information board at the start, but didn't pay enough attention, surprise, surprise. Um, so that is the rainstone then. We'll catch that on the way back and then I will add it here. Most of my return route will be the same but there is one loop that I want to do that goes around the other side of one of the reservoirs. So I will give you that loop on the way back. And the reservoir that I think that is, is on the other side of these rocks and it's Whiteholm Reservoir little list of reservoir names. So yes, Whiteholm Reservoir is on the other side of these rocks. And I'm pretty sure that's the one I'm going... Oh no it isn't. <laughs> Ignore that, I'd written some notes on here. Um, brick things down there. Look at this view. some sort of building outcrop there which maybe relates to the this all relates to the reservoir another pylon a list 
passed away so I don't notice it. mind if it doesn't get sunny today. It's not supposed to. This is extraordinarily flat. Which is pretty good for a long hike. Is it Yorkshire Water or United Utilities? United Utilities, who are my water provider. Thank you for putting my bill up. <laughs> right, sun's out now. is going as well. So I'm going to follow this round to the left. And here is another reservoir. This is the light Hazel's Reservoir and it's a really long thin reservoir Oh look at that This is a long but very easy stretch of hiking route if you're looking for something flat and picturesque with landscapes. This is probably the one. I know some of the others I've said are easy but this seems to be particularly suitable for easy walking.
see any sign of bird life. Yeah. Where that name comes from. Oh, look. Now I won't be going as far as Stoosley Pike today. It's too far because I've got to come back as well. But my next hike, whenever that will be, weather dependent, um, should include Studley Pike. I was a bit unsure where I was going to end up parking, but Yorkshire Water has a designated free car park with a recommended circular route of about four and a half miles, which includes the pike. So, That will be my next hike and probably as far north as I end up, at least this year. But we'll see. You never know. the end of the Lighthouse's Reservoir, right in the distance there where that tower is. I don't know if you can see that one here. We're walking the full length of it. This is a, a lovely flat bit of moorland. Oh, damsel flies. Oh, but this is a wonderful haven for wildlife up here. It's miserable here in winter. If you imagine getting a really crisp winter morning though, when it's frosty but still and the sky is really clear, this must be amazing. Can you see the footprints? Are they footprints? They look like footprints. That's rather an excessively large bird. I mean, it looks like footprints. Dogs? I doubt there's any sizeable wild animals up here. They do look like footprints though. Backwards and forwards across the edge. They're not people shaped. Hmm. This is quite glorious up here, I have to say. Cyclists coming up behind.
है my bike on the back of my car I would so bring a bike up here but my car doesn't take a bike rack I've got one of those weird boot lids that's just glass it has no edge to it and I've looked online and I haven't been able to find anything and it's slightly too long to go in the boot, even with the back down and with the front passenger seat down without me taking off the front wheel. And I cannot be bothered with that. I don't have a quick release wheel on it, so I don't care. But it would be nice, wouldn't it? To be able to cycle all of this. Think how many miles you could cycle in a day. This is nice. So, light hazels goes round to the right here. And then in front is Warland Reservoir and that I think is the one with the circular route but we'll worry about that on the way back Wayland, Warland Reservoir looks a lot bigger than that on the map. This is the Warland Reservoir. Oh yes, you can see where the gates are up there, there's a circular walk. Some stones. I guess that's where the water comes through. 
Oh, look at that. RCWW 1925. And there's a matching pair. And then here it says RC1885. So, this must be the overflow that joins light hassles to Warland. That's blended. And we have two possible trails to run here. Pretty sure we're staying right. Let's have a look. So at the bottom, Todmorden Centenary Way and Rochdale Way. And on the right is the Pennine Way National Trail and the Stoodley Pike. Mithlenroyd, I can't pronounce that. We are sticking with the reservoir. Huge! to find out what a twit sounds like because I can hear a bird twittering away in the background that doesn't sound like birds I've heard before breeze here across the water. I'm going to check my bit of paper. This is the last reservoir. So I just need to have a look and see what comes next. Right, I just need to keep an eye on my route. because there are lots of possible places to slip up and end up going the wrong way. Following the water around here, right to the edge there, and then I don't know whether I'm following a river or a brook or an inlet to the reservoir but it seems to follow that path.
so somewhere off to the left and out round somewhere that way is Todmorden or Todmorden I don't know quite how you pronounce it and that track down there follows that walk and when I earlier in the year when I did my car camping trip and I went to Keswick I was looking for a particular relative who'd remained elusive for the 30 years that I've been tracking my family tree and one of her I don't know children's children's children ended up in Todmorden I don't know if that's where they ended their days. <coughs> and they were quite an offshoot of the family. But there's, there's some nice additional walks through the hills here. So you can get off the Pennine Way Trail if you want to. a lot of options out here and we are in Yorkshire little tower there's something tower looking out there as well I wonder what that is all sorts of little rocky outcrops as well has long since gone. Right. I might have to conserve a little bit of battery on this route. Those longer hikes that I do that are seven or eight miles, I get back and I've got about 3% left on my battery. And if there are things I want to record on the way back, I might have to be conservative with my recording today. switch off for a moment and pick up with you in a bit when it gets a bit more interesting. See you in a minute. You won't be able to see them from here but there are a couple of birds of prey flying around. I'm assuming they are kestrels. 
one of them was hovering. What is that bird on the wall there? That looks like a meadow pipit. Yeah. Um, I think the birds are kestrels. I don't know if you can see that there. You see a bird hovering? It's a bit of a dot. And as I said before, kestrels are the only birds of prey that we have that truly hover. And that is definitely hovering. There's a wren I can hear. Very little bird life on the reservoirs and I'm going to presume that's because there's not a lot here for them. Reservoirs are artificially made. They don't have nice sandy muddy edges that waders can use to find food. I'm assuming they, they're probably quite sterile environments and the only ones where I've seen waders were when I was up at that dam where I got a bit lost. But look at all this lovely old equipment. That doesn't look like it's been in use for a long time. Oh yeah, look, can you see the kestrel? Oh, look at that. I just saw a wagtail as well. As I say, there's not an awful lot here for water birds. You never see like loads and loads of ducks and geese on the water or whatever. I don't know if you can hear that twittering. That is the wagtails. the gate to cross through. That's the Stoodley Pike Trail. Public footpath Calderdale. We're not going there. Uh, which way do we go to get through here then? stick with this one I think. Fabulous view of Warland there. And somewhere up here I think there will probably be another gate to the right and that should be the circular walk that I can do on the way back. Possibly. That doesn't look very... There's, a, there's a definitely a path there, but... No way to get to it. We'll worry about that on the way back. So what we are following, the water channel I thought we would be following, is the inlet for the reservoir. Hard to get lost when you're following this. But we will keep an eye on the signs. 
It feels like the terrain is changing again. We're into Heather Moorland now. Where you might see, I don't know, grouse and all sorts. There's a little tower in the distance. Oh, there goes the kestrel. See it down there. I wonder if that is Stoodley Pike. It may look close, but don't be deceived. That's too far for me to hike in one day. route is going to be a bit difficult to oh, it's going to be a bit difficult to uh, find unless the path's up here but I don't see any sign of a, a path on the other side there not to worry So many signs. So Pennine Way to the White House. So that means that we've done, if you can see that because of the light, that means we've done two and three quarters of a mile. And that tells us we're on the right track. And this little path down here, which is very nice, follows the West Pennine Way link and the Todmorden link. So the Pennine Way and the Studley Pike Way seem to run in the same direction. Now I wonder if that path on the... I don't know. It's just the one path. Hmm. Think back in the whenever they did this, they had to get all this stone up here before the trail was laid. And get it all up here to build these reservoirs and all these outlets by horse and cart, there wouldn't have been anything else back there, back then. And the terrain must have been terrifically bad, because I think you, all you would have had then was, you know, like sheep trails and farmer's tracks, and not a lot else. 
And I don't even know that tracks like this would have existed back then because people weren't necessarily trekking this a lot for fun. I'm going to have a look at my map again just to be sure that we're okay. Look at that view. Can't exactly tell what that stone is. I'll find out and add the information. But we are on the right route. I'm going to put you down for a minute and conserve battery because this path like this carries on for a bit of a way I think and then there will be another little junction at the end and I need to take the left path and just keep going this little path, little flagstone path that runs right across the moors. These are a good idea because I wonder what that was. They keep people on a straight path and that prevents erosion of the peat and disturbing wildlife and things and you can see looking at all of this you can imagine when this gets really hot I mean that will just go up in flames in no time it's really scary I couldn't work out if they had actually stopped that more fire across the moor there. The problem is that you damp them down and they smolder and then when you're not looking it only takes one little bit to re reignite and it's off again so they have to be really sure and the best way to be really sure is for there to be a downpour, a nice heavy long downpour that gets right into the ground and of course they will come done about three miles now. And when I hit my destination, we'll stop for a break. I don't really think I'm that far off now. I think it's about four miles each way, or thereabouts. But this is a nice, easy Nice easy route. And it's nice and cool. Breeze is picking up, which is very welcome.
it's not too sunny today. We have a, a suitable amount of cloud cover to keep the sun off. It's not too bad today. So this is perfect conditions for a hike. Still got my long sleeves on. I can see a signpost in the distance and I think that this is where the next junction is. I think I'm supposed to turn left. But if it's signposted, it should tell me what I need to know. I see useful signs. What that one on the right is for. So this on the left is telling me this is the Pennine Way and the Studley Pike. I'm beginning to think that is the Studley Pike. Uh, and then the Topmaden as well. What does this sign say? Let's have a look. Because there's another track through here. Ah, this is the reservoir circuit to Whitehome. That might be the track I'm looking for. 
I'll have a look at that. When I get to my destination and have a break. Because that might be what I was looking for. That would be a nice alternative back. These flagstone paths make life so much easier. Is that an old fence post or a marker post? you off in a minute and again we're going to conserve a little bit of battery whilst the scenery isn't changing very much I know it's uh, not quite the whole hike but I don't want to run out of battery before I get back to that reverse circuit so I'll catch up with you in a minute there is Withens Clough Reservoir and that tower in the distance is Stidley Pike which I am not going to make it to today. <coughs> it's further away than it looks I think and on my next hike that was going to take in Studley Pike. So I've done three and a half miles or just over three and a half miles so far according to my step counter app. I'm going to get to the the first point of call that was going to be my destination today because I don't want to go too far and then repeat a walk on my next hike because the whole point is that I get as much new trail done as possible destination is a crossroads of trail and I need to turn right and then my final resting point which I think is called the Teddy M Stone will be there and then And then we'll have a look and assess. I need to assess the return route because if that reservoir, circular reservoir return route is different and longer, I need to take that into account because it looks like the circular route back may be longer than the route out. I suspect I would have reached a new a new limit for me today which will be good if I can hit nine miles 
that'll be a new distance for me. Only a little bit, but... Oops, what does that little sign say there? Wet weather walking route. I guess it gets a bit flooded here. If you can see by this ground that it gets quite boggy up here, but not today. swampy at times. Well, <laughs> I've been through some of it, but it's very dry at the moment. Oh look, we're back on the path. Yeah, it's a little bit of an alternative route for when it gets really wet. I do not particularly want to be up here when it's really wet. You could get stuck in this, it sinks up past your boots. <sighs> I'm not really an all-weather hiker. Although I think I'm going to get myself a little bit of wet weather gear because It might come in handy. Straight on for the Pennine, and that's the Calderdale one to the left, although I can't even see where that trail is. We all stick to the main one. We haven't reached the crossroads yet. It looks so close, doesn't it? Which is fine on the way out, <laughs> not on the way back. So 
I need to see what that is. This is the Cyril Webster bench. Yes, I remember seeing this on the map. What a lovely bench. You can see that. Park myself for a minute on Cyril Webster's bench. Oh. And he has a great view. Wow, look at that view. Okay, so if I walk from here up to there, that is going to add another 47 minutes and 2 miles to my trip. I've already done... about 2.5 hours, and I've done 4 miles, which would mean just going up there and back, so that's exactly the same route I've just done, would mean I've done 12 miles, which is like a third again to the longest I've ever walked. I don't really fancy doing it. I wanted to do Stukely Pike on my next hike, so I'm not going to go. You'll just have to look at it for an hour. Off to the right, which I think I can see from here, is where I'm thinking about making my destination, which is another little monument marker point. And there I will have my, my break, and then have a look at that return circular and see how that looks I think I've got about half my battery left at the moment let's get down here where it's a bit easier this is where it starts to get hilly and my flat route stops being so flat. This is the only hill I have to encounter today. That makes me happy. sheep down there.
that is my destination point in front. the crossroads. Called it our MBC Metropolitan Borough Council. Right. Penno Way in front. Calderdale Way and Crag Vale to the right. I think I need to turn right. I mark a point there, but I'm pretty sure that my last point of call is going to be up here. a stone I'd sit here because this is the view you want. So I think that this path Do you know what? I'm going to wait here. I'm going to find my own stone. Let's pick a stone up here. Because I really want this view. This is mine. I think that looks safe enough. Now that is the view I want when I'm eating my snacks. this view. So I've had my break. There are hikers everywhere around here so I'm going to start heading back. Um, and I'm going to have a look at that reservoir route once I get closer and look at the map again. I've got half my battery left so we're not doing too bad. So I'm going to hike back I won't take you with me for that bit because you've seen it. And then we'll pick up at that new junction. See you in a bit. 
I mean, it looks pretty self-explanatory. As long as it stays like this, we'll be all right. And I will periodically check the map just in case. It's half past 11. I've just hit my five mile marker. And it's nice and cool still. I can see bike tracks here, so a couple of cyclists that passed me earlier, I saw them following this route at some point. So hopefully this will bring us out somewhere along those reservoirs and I can pick up my return route. There seem to be signposts anyway, which is good. I always feel much safer when I continue to see <laughs> the little arrows. The arrows are good. We need lots of the arrows. And that says Yorkshire Water Permissive Path. But, and this is the way. It's a bit wobbly that, isn't it? We are going right up into the heather moorland here. Heaven's knows where I'm going to end up here. still see the bike tracks. I think if I'm following the bike tracks I'm probably safe. moody here, it's very dark, all this heather makes the landscape much darker. It's amazing how different things can suddenly be when you take a slightly different route. The change in landscapes is, or can be quite drastic. I presume at some point it will, will bow round to the right, which is where the reservoirs are.
So there's Stoodley Pike there, and I think that little jumbly section to the left is probably where I sat. So I've come in a big loop around there. There's a little derelict house down there. I wonder if he used to live there. This is lovely. It's so nice out here. Very quiet life for a sheep up here and there's a sheep watching me right now. So what are you doing? Move. They spend most of their year up here and they get brought down for tupping season, which is when they get mated for next year's lambs. And I think that they bring them down onto the lower slopes in winter in case they need to get them in quick if the weather really turns. But I've noticed there's a lot of lower fields around here that are just like regular grazing fields so they might keep them all in there in the winter. And then once they've had their lambs in the lower fields and the lambs are tough enough and I've had all their shots and things like that. They get sent back out onto the hills for the rest of the season. One of my favourite programmes, which I don't think is on at the moment, is This Farming Life. I do enjoy seeing how farms work. Although, it does remind you, you have to be pretty tough to be a farmer because, you know, most of farming is the meat industry and you've got to be willing to send your animals to slaughter if they don't pull their weight and when it's the season, I couldn't do that. I mean, I'd love to be a, a wool farmer, so raising sheep for the wool. But we have no wool industry here anymore. They landfill it, it's got no value. And it used to be such a valu valuable commodity. Um, yeah, it used to be a valuable commodity and before synthetic fibres it was silk and cotton and wool and all those derivatives of and then synthetics came into play and you started having nylon and polyester and all that rubbish that is incredibly bad for the environment because it doesn't disintegrate like natural fibres do. And of course all the dyes which poison the water tables. a shirt. We'll take that back. Um, yeah, so there's very, very little wool industry left 
in the UK now. They pack it into walls as insulation and it gets landfilled and obviously there are traditional crafts like you have tweed and fair isle and they're using wool but they use small amounts compared to the number of sheep in the country and can you imagine farmers they make extra money if they were able to sell the wool that comes off their sheep twice a year absolute sacrilege and a shocking We've boiled everything down to its value as plastic, which is what synthetic fibres basically are, which is why they're so troublesome. Hey ho. And I know that there are companies trying, protect, trying to protect the rest of the wool industry and protect the crafts that come with it and all that sort of thing but there's only so much they can do when they're fighting against the tide of fast fashion and import export and all that sort of thing I think that using wool as insulation in buildings is a great way to use some of it productively and pay the farmer something, but I don't know how much of it happens. Good idea though. I mean, you could use up loads of wool if the the promised rate of house building that's supposed to be coming which I doubt will happen but I keep hearing about new hello sheep new housing projects which they're trying to start in the area and they're just building on chunks of greenbelt absolutely destroying what's left of our countryside And it doesn't solve the problem because they say, oh, we're going to make affordable housing. And maybe it's affordable to the first person. But as soon as that house goes back on the market, all bets are off. And they talk about building more social housing. But it never happens. They all sound like good ideas until people kind of put them into practice. I mean, the housing industry survives on profit margins. It's all about making money, not about helping people. So building more houses isn't going to solve the problem because they will still be unaffordable for the majority of people. And unless you have rent control, which means the housing has to belong to the councils rather than private, then you're never going to be able to control the rent enough to make anything affordable for anybody. And you think how many millions of people just want some affordable rent, let alone the concept of ever being able to buy. People like me will never own their own their own homes. The only way I have any chance at all of owning my own home is if I inherit my parents' house, which is on the cards, but you don't know what's gonna happen. My parents have made it very clear that they absolutely never want to go into care 
they've made that explicitly to me and I wouldn't want to do that anyway I think it's a horrible thing to do but if you have a situation where you have no choice you might have to if there is enough money you might be able to pay for additional help to come in and help in the home especially if the, uh, there are medical challenges that have to be met but it's whether there's the money to do it and whilst they say they've made provision for all these things and they've tried to plan as best they can you know if Labour get their way all the pensioners that wouldn't have to rely on the NHS and squeeze the NHS a little bit more are going to have to rely on that because Labour wants to take all their money away. So it doesn't always do to take to fleece the pensioners. We're not fleecing Amazon or Google or any of the other companies that use tax loopholes to avoid paying their bit. We're going to target the pensioners and the self-employed and all the easy targets to fill billions and billions and billions in public funding gaps. And it won't work because people won't take it. If they take all the money away from pensioners who thought they wouldn't have to rely on the NHS in their elderly years, and then they do, putting more pressure on the NHS, and they end up having to ask for help from their kids, who are probably already pretty broke, you're just adding more people to the pot of problems. Why are we targeting pensioners and self-employed people first for taxes and not huge corporations who manage to get out of paying their taxes. Look at people like Rishi Sunak who have managed to stay on the 20% or 40% tax bracket because of his wife's non-dom status so everything's in her name so they can avoid paying any tax. I mean, that's just what you expect from a politician, isn't it? I'm going to check my map. That's a reservoir. But it's not one of the reservoirs that I was walking. So I just need to check where I'm going. Okay, so even though I feel like I'm walking way out of my route, I'm actually not. So that's where I've come from. But we are walking in a, a route that's taking us right around the back of the reservoirs that I passed on the way in. And hopefully it will bring us out at White Home. sort of point for the water. Who knows? Oh yeah, look. Watery. Ooh, look at this. It's a water pipe. Huh, look at that. It's probably bringing in water. Wow, look at this. So this is what peat erosion does. Look at this peat. Thousands of years old. It's like a sponge. Not a lot of water in that because it's been exposed to the air. 
But this is what they're trying to repair. Because the peat is so important to life up here. Look at these pipes. It's not very pretty, is it? I don't even think they're that old because they're concrete, look. It's a fairly modern concrete. But at least we know what route we're following. <laughs> Nice to get a different circuit back. It's nice to see something else. I wish the Pennine Way had a few more circuit routes like this and it would just make things slightly different on the way back. Although, to be honest with you, when I'm walking back, I always spot things that I didn't remember seeing on the way out and then I'm questioning whether or not I've gone the right way because there's a lot to take in and you don't always focus lots of heather look at this lovely dark heather I think it's in the... Oh look! There'd be a spider living in there. Hiding in there. There's two of them, look. This is a very different landscape. Still see the tyre tracks from the cyclists I saw earlier. It's all good. So that's that pipe there. There's that reservoir down there. And now this pipe is kind of working its way back into the ground. I'm trying not to trip over it. Huh. I don't want to walk across the top, it's too windy. Sure as hell don't want to slip. You might not see anybody for hours and hours out here. So unfortunately when you're walking out here you spend most of your time looking down because you don't want to trip. Doodly Pike wants to be seen from absolutely everywhere.
really hard to tell what the birds are up here. They're all the same colour as the background for camouflage. The only way you can distinguish them really is their calls. And then I just have to try and memorise the calls and look at them when I get home and see if I can recognise them. sheep It's not doing anything very useful anymore. That lovely old gnarled wood. All smooth. Probably because of the wind and the rain. I don't quite like this route. tracks look like they were made by bigger vehicles. Whew. It's a little little building there. Looks like it's got a window in it. to do with the reservoirs or maybe it was a little shepherd's hut or a hiker's shelter bothies that's what they're called all the way out here, isn't it? Oh, he's got his own trail. Let's go and have a look at it. This would not have been somebody's house. It's got a fireplace. See the fireplace just down there? And... Big old table. Heavens knows. I wonder. 
Right, let's get back on the trail. I'll try and look up what that was. There might be some information on it. I think we would have put in a fair few miles today. So I'm breaking in my boots well to my foot shape now. Really settled into these. I still have some sponge pieces at certain points where I've had blisters before but I don't know if I need them now just being cautious look at that and there's Stoodley Pike again Culverts. It's weird how no matter where you go there are signs of people building things. There are lots of crickets here. <laughs> I love that sound. And there's the heather starting to bloom. Look, and you can see that in the distance. There's all the pylons that I saw on the way in. The 
This is just fantastic. Look at all this heather. Still see the tire tracks. They're probably home with their feet up with a cuppa by now. <laughs> Saw them about three hours ago. Right, I'm going to drop you for a minute to save battery because this landscape is not going to change for quite a while. Hope you're enjoying this. It's lovely and breezy up here, so although the temperature's rising, it's lovely and cool. Right, see you in a bit. I don't know if you can see any of that down there, but the main road is down there. You can just see the odd car. Just somewhere out of view, right around the corner and around the other side will be where my car is. So, it's been a nice loop. It's not been difficult and it's glorious countryside. I keep disturbing small birds. Um, there's a lot of birds in the heather up here. Ruining their day. Wow, it's windy here. You can probably hear it. This is a very obvious path. You can't get lost on here. Although I see signs that when it rains, this probably turns into a sea because all the water is running downwards to my left. There's the odd tree coming up. I'll have to look at what those birds are when I get back. I keep seeing flashes of like greeny yellow. So I don't know if they're warblers. I will look up what lives on the moor when I get back and show you some pictures. These huge rocks.
Probably been here since the Ice Age, rumbling around. You may have seen dinosaurs. In parts of earthquakes and volcanoes and all sorts of things. Right, this looks like it's something to do with <sighs> with reservoirs. It's like the end of the trail for the reservoirs. There's a like an overflow there that I've been following for quite a while now, and here is. Little, they can put um, the dam, they can dam it. I guess if it gets too high, or well, looks like the reservoir is going to get too low, I don't know. And then up there is something else. So that stretch that runs from there down it looks like a wall. That, I would imagine, is look, White Home Wreck Lodge railings. <laughs> so this must be, oh look, the route's changed. <laughs> this is access for United Utilities, I should imagine, and the walk back to the reservoir. So if I keep following along here, eventually I'm going to end up at the reservoir. Got some moody, rocky outcrops up there, and the ones down here. And down all the way across there where you can see the pylons is I suspect the main road that I drove in on continuing I would imagine towards Leeds or that direction anyway I bet there's all sorts of nature living down there in that water you get a lot of damsels and dragonflies, I've just seen one go past. Which is lovely to see, because you don't see them much in towns and things. And these open bodies of water are perfect for them. Just saw a bird with a blush of pink on it there. I wonder what that is. Um, see the water's opening up now. Oh, there's geese down there. Some Canada geese. They're off. <laughs> they don't like that they've seen me. I well, suppose an awful lot of people walk this section. up here, look at that. Practically got its own tide. You can smell the water. It's lovely. Oh yeah, I can see the reservoir in front of me. Just peeking over the top of the brow.
geese. Three Canada geese. Wow, boy is it windy here. <laughs> Oh, it's lovely and cool though. Oh, it's like a choppy sea. Blimey. Right, so now I've got to get all the way around the other side of that. <laughs> Oh, I'd love to put my feet in that water right now. Right, let's follow this track all the way around White Home Reservoir. And then we're getting pretty close to home. crossing here and we turn and follow the reservoir that way so that means we've done one stretch Look like more sluice gates. <coughs> no, it is. This is the river compensation chamber, and it's got about <laughs> ten QR codes. This is White Home. following it's really windy so I'm sorry about how jiggly the camera is it's a uh, really strong sideways wind Some cows out here by the looks of it I don't want to meet any cows Keep following this stretch. So you can see how windy it is. Um, I've reorientated myself with where I am on the map, and of course, White Home Reservoir is the one that I didn't see on the way out. I was very close to it, but I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't able to actually see it. So that's, that's this reservoir. And that was the one that I thought I had a circuit on. Um, I was looking at uh, Wayland Reservoir, which had a circuit which I couldn't do. But this is the one 
where I thought there was a walk around it so I was right the first time so behind me is the main road behind me here is the reservoir and then in front of me I keep walking and then follow the reservoir around to the right I should find myself back on the Pennine Way I can see people walking in the distance who have obviously taken the other route that I didn't The birds make themselves so difficult to see here. I can see two birds on the, the edge of the reservoir and they've got that kind of pink hue to them. And they're not that small. What are they? They do not want to be seen. What a pain. My binoculars are right at the bottom of my bag. they're off. I knew by the time I get binoculars out they'll be long gone. They're not used to people but I think I could see enough of them that when I get back if I have a look at all the pictures of the birds that are associated with this area I should be able to work out what I was looking at. scenery is completely changed again here. Much more grassy. That circuit was really good. I really enjoyed that. I'm pleased I decided to give that a go. That was worth the effort. People who come for a day out at the beach. <laughs> Think of less windy places to be. And there we are, back at the pylon lines. And that goes wherever it goes up there. And then we are going this way. Following around that final stretch back to the Pennine Way. And the bridge. More QR codes. Access bridge over Byron Edge. Well, this is quite close to Rochdale, so kind of no surprise it says Byron Edge. My camera phone has died, run out of battery. I'm just going to show you a couple of things. Look, little sandy bits of beach here. It says danger, no swimming, but it doesn't say you can't sit on the beach. And I don't know if you can see it, but out there, there's a rocky outcrop right in the middle of the reservoir and I'm going to look that up when I get back because people and villages and habitation and they just turfed everyone out and flooded everything so that might be the remnant of a of a wall from a farmer's field or something so there is the Light Hazels Reservoir and the Pennine Way that I was on this morning. That's how close I was to the other reservoir. So I'm just going to follow down here and that will join me up with the Pennine Way there and then left and keep going and we're home. So that was all pretty good. 
That'll work pretty well. That's a good circular route, but I've done a lot. That mileage looks huge. I'll uh, talk you through it when I get back. I've ended up back at that cute little bridge that I saw on the way in. And I'm going to go and have a look at the text that's on that stone, the rain stone. So let's have a look at that. That stone is just the big one there. So we'll follow the little track that runs along here. And we'll go and see what that says. So here's the rainstone. Someone put a poem on it by the looks of it. It says, Rain, be glad of these fresh water tears, each pearled droplet, some salty old sea bullet. Air lifted out of the waves, then laundered and sieved, recast as a soft bead and returned. And no matter how much, in strafes or sheets, it is no mean feat to catch one raindrop clean in the mouth, to take one drop on the tongue. Fasting cloud pollen, grain of the heavens, raw sky, let me, or let it team up here, where the front of the mind distills the brunt of the world, by S.A. Fabulous texture of that stone absolutely glorious. Um, I'll get some backgrounds to this piece of text. And uh, include that for you. So that's my little divert. Right, and now I have to walk all the way back along there. You can just see people in the distance on the top. And then back to the car. So I'll see you there. back at the car, very windswept. If I had the energy and the money, I'd have had a meal at that pub. It's packed. <laughs> People clearly come from miles around to eat here. And maybe because they've just had a walk. And maybe next time I'm here, maybe I'll come back out at some point, do a shorter walk and treat myself to a spot of lunch but that's not happening today. It's half past two, so this has been a much longer hike than uh, I was expecting. Just gonna have a quick look at the numbers. I've done 9.86 miles. It took me four hours and 20 minutes, and I've done just over 24,000 <laughs> steps. No wonder I'm knackered. It's not been horrifically bad because the weather's been very cool and the route was pretty flat, but taking that, um, that reservoir circuit really added the mileage. I'll do you a route map so you can see where I actually went today. I would definitely love to come up here and eat here. It's busy, which means that this place must be good. And I could come up here and do a short walk. I could maybe go up that way and fill in that gap towards um, Blackstone Edge uh, Trig Point, which is where I stopped. 
Oh, but it's not happening today. I just want to go home. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, I've got to eat my other pear. I had a pear and a banana en route. And my cheeky drink of choice was this 7-Up, which I got free the other day. Which I'm going to finish up now because I won't drink it when I'm home. And that's it. I think the weather is on the turn tomorrow. And frankly, <laughs> I don't even have the energy to think about any more hikes, let alone do any. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be it for... <sighs> that's it for today. Wow. Right, I'm going to have my snack, have some water, and then head home. So I hope you enjoyed whatever I show you here. I'll add all the bits of information along the way that I can find. Um, I'm just f charging my other phone. It completely died on that route back. So the last bits are done on my regular phone, um, which I always keep as emergency battery anyway. Lots of people still coming out here to head off for their hikes. I don't want to um, get caught in the traffic, so I'm going to head off and uh, catch you on the next one. 